Hi, we've talked before in previous videos about how fertilizers can damage the soil and the harm that it can do to the biology. And what we're gonna look at today in a little bit more detail is exactly what happens if you use those salt fertilizers. So what is a salt fertilizer? Well, these are commercial fertilizers like magnesium sulfate and ammonium nitrate, potassium chloride and potassium sulfate. These are well-known fertilizers and they do two things really to the soil. What they're really good at doing is damaging the biology in the soil. The biology in the soil is the bacteria, the fungi, and the small creatures that inhabit the soil, which do not like being exposed to very reactive chemicals. And this has a long-term impact on the viability of the soil. So that's what we're gonna look at next. But what happens when you add these fertilizers to soil is first of all, if they're soluble, they will dissolve and become part of the soil solution. But they have a very corrosive effect on the actual soil. They oxidize the soil and they can cause disease because what happens is when you oxidize soil, you select for the bacteria and fungi which are pathogenic. These are the problems which a lot of trees face. Things like verticillium, rhizoctonia, pythium, fusarium. Difficult to treat diseases which are encouraged by oxidized soil. And perversely, by adding these fertilizers, although they may increase yields here and there, they do a lot of damage to the actual long-term viability of the orchard. And that's what we're gonna cover next. So when you add a fertilizer to soil, one of the difficulties that you face is you never really know how much of that nutrient will end up in the plant. And when it's in an ionic form, for example, potassium sulfate, you have potassium ions and you have sulfate ions, and a vast percentage of that potassium never reaches the plant because it's immediately locked into any clay that's in the soil. So there's a very small correlation between what you apply to the soil and what actually ends up in the plant, which means most of it is guesswork. And the only true way of knowing what's in the plant is to do a sap analysis, which of course for a small orchard with a multitude of different trees becomes very difficult. So from an economic point of view, salt fertilizers or these ionic fertilizers are quite a risky venture. So that's the problem. And we're gonna look at the molecule now and just explain a little bit about how it's constructed. So here is a molecule of potassium sulfate, a very typical fertilizer that's used widely throughout the world. I'll explain what the components are. The green parts are potassium ions. These are in um, a very simple form. They have a single bond and they're joined on to four red oxygens with a central sulfur um, atom in the middle. And these are very important, these structures, because they're fairly stable, but like most potassium compounds, this is a soluble ionizing uh, product. So once you put it in water, it'll dissolve, the potassium will ionize, and the sulfate anion will float around as well and become very reactive. And what happens when you add this to the soil is you're actually adding a very large percentage of oxygen to the soil, which is the real problem. So when you're using a sulfate fertilizer, over 50% of this molecule is not potassium. You're adding sulfur and you're adding oxygen. And unfortunately, when the potassium is used up, you're left with that anion, the sulfate anion, which can form sulfuric acid in the soil. So you push down your pH, which further increases um, this effect of promoting um, a lower pH, but conversely, quite an oxidized soil, a very disease-prone soil. So, the story is even worse than just the ionizing and oxidizing effect on the soil. There's an economic impact as well. When you make potassium fertilizer, it costs a lot of money, it costs a lot of energy to manufacture and transport. And that has a huge impact on the bottom line of any orchard. So there is an alternative, much lower cost method which we employ here. We use a natural product, which is the rock dust, which are generally from uh, the volcanic deposits and they contain many different forms of potassium, for example, and other nutrients, but they tend to be in silicate form, which is much gentler on the soil and a much more natural form, and is taken up by the bacteria and the fungi and metabolized through their um, hyphae and bacterial uh, rhizophagy into the roots, and that, of course, is the normal way that plants like to take up potassium. There's no oxidizing effect on the soil, and in fact, it, it does the reverse, it promotes reduction of the soil, it promotes carbon sequestration, and the most important thing is the return on investment is much higher 
and there's no wastage and a very small manufacturing cost. So that's a much easier way for us to operate. The second product that we use here is a seaweed based product which we use as a foliar feed um, in the summer and the advantage of that although it does contain some potassium it's in a very bioavailable form so there's no wastage it's taken up rapidly and it's also a very cheap way of feeding potassium which in the end is a much more economic sustainable way of working.